Hi, I'm James Ward, a platform evangelist at Salesforce. I want to walk you through an end-to-end -end workflow where we're going to deploy a Spring Boot application on Heroku and then be able to make some changes to that on our local machine and then redeploy those changes and all without any command lines. So to get started, you can go to this GitHub repo. It's on GitHub James Ward and then hello-spring boot. And the first thing I'm going to do is to place on Heroku. So I just click that button, and now I can walk through the process of deploying it. So there we go. I'm going to just keep all the defaults and say deploy for free. So now what this will do is pull down the source code from GitHub and then, uh, then run the build. This uses Gradle for the build, so it's going to run that build. This will take a minute the first time because it has to download the dependencies there. Uh, but then those will be cached so future builds will be faster. Once that's done, it'll be up and running on Heroku and we'll be able to go check it out. So this application is using Spring Boot, Java, and Gradle and we could use this as a template to build web apps or REST apps or whatever. Okay, so it looks like it's now uh, been compiled and we can go check it out. We've been assigned a domain name, this boiling headland, uh, the number herocrap.com. Of course, you could point your own domain name at this as well. But we'll just leave it with that one. So Spring Boot is booting up, and once it's booted up, we should see the web app there in our browser. So there we go. We see that very simple hello world. Okay, so now that our app is running on the cloud, let's set up a local development environment and make some changes and test them locally and then redeploy those changes. Okay, so let's download the source code for this application. From the GitHub repo, I'm just going to say download zip and then let's show this in Finder. There's my zip file. I'm just going to double click on it to extract it and then we can go into that directory and here we have the Gradle uh, wrapper, which allows us to just run it right here from Finder. So I'm going to hold down Control on my Mac and then say Open. And I'm going to say, yep, that's fine. I want to run that shell script. And now what Gradle is going to do is do everything that it needs to to set up my local development environment. So it's going to download all the dependencies. It's also downloading Atom, a uh, code editor, and then it's going to start up the development server for this application. So there we can see here's my application that I'm going to work on, uh, the source code. We can see the readme, and then we can also look through the, the build and that sort of thing. Um, but the exciting part will come in when we uh, actually start editing some Java code. And you'll see back over here in the, the console where we're running the Gradle build, it's actually starting up the Tomcat server, the embedded Tomcat server, and that's just using Spring Boot uh, to, to boot that all up. But then we can go in and actually before we make a code change, let's go back to our browser and let's go check out this application here in the browser. It's on localhost 8080. And so there we get the same thing that we saw running on Heroku. So the local development environment is all set up. Let's go make a quick little change. So if I browse down into the source code, this is the only source file for this application. You'll see that I've got a static void main that's starting up the Spring Boot application. And then I have a uh, Spring MVC controller that's handling requests to slash and saying, hello world. So let's change that to hello James. And when I save that, if we go back to the console, you'll see that it's actually detected a change and has reloaded everything. So now when I go back to the browser and reload that, we see the change there immediately. It's a really nice workflow for making changes to this app and, and seeing them live in the browser. Okay, so now that I've made this very simple change, what I wanna do is deploy this change on Heroku. And you'll see up here in Atom, there's a new menu here for Heroku. I'm going to log out so you can see the, the full process uh, here. But first thing we're going to do is log into Heroku from here. And I'm going to use my demo account. And this one doesn't have two factor, so it should be um, easy to, uh, to log in if I can remember my, my password. There we go. Okay, so now that I'm logged into Heroku, uh, this also logs me in so that I could use the Heroku command line, if you want to use the command line. 
But then I can select deploy and it's going to load a list of my applications and the application that, um, that I'm working with here is that boiling headland one so I'm going to select that. So it's now going to upload my application up to Heroku and you'll see that it's telling me hey uh, we're doing a build on Heroku so let's go check out the status of that build. We can go watch the, the build output here. You'll see again, Roku's running the Gradle build and it should run a bit faster this time since it should have all the, the dependencies that it needs. So 10 seconds, uh, it's completed the build and now it's going to relaunch this application and, uh, and then we should be able to go check it out. So there we go, it's been deployed. Let's go back to our app on Heroku and refresh this page. And once Spring Boot starts back up, then we should see my change live and running on Heroku. It takes just a second for Spring Boot to, to boot up, but we should be here. There it is, okay. Great, so, so we've gone full round trip of deploying an app on the cloud, pulling that application down to my local machine, bootstrapping the full development environment that I need to make changes, making a change, testing that change locally, and then redeploying that change on Heroku. So if you want to get started with the Spring Boot example, just go to this GitHub repo, github.com slash jamesaward slash hello dash spring boot. Thanks for watching.